We lift you high. We lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you high. Yahweh, Yahweh. We lift you high. Yahweh, there we are. We're live. So I was singing for you, y'all. Singing for you to just make sure we're live. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to check and make sure this went live. I was having a few problems this morning. There we are. Good morning, everybody. I love you. I love you. Obviously, we love you, Jesus. And I'm singing good morning. We lift you high, Yahweh, this morning. So welcome to Pastor Callie, Ship, Gray's Mothers and I on prayer call. I'm Karen Edwards. And um, on Thursdays, uh, Pastor Diane and Ann, Pastor Han Ann Hammock and I uh, rotate. So it's Thursday morning. So thank you. Welcome. Let's just make sure people are hopping on. And just see, there you are. Beautiful ladies. Good morning, Gina and Donna and Kay and Michelle. God bless you. Oh, are we ready to pray? We have 30 minutes. Some of you will stay on personally for another 30 minutes and pray as Patricia King, Firewall USA is also praying. So we're going to take 30 minutes and just lift our voices to the Lord. Um, and it's such an honor and a privilege to be doing this. It's so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. Before we begin, um, just want to remind you that we will take communion this morning together. Um, just reminding us of our, our most precious of gift of all uh, in all the world is Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for us. So we will take communion. Just grab your elements. It's so good to see you all on. I hope, I hope many of you got to be a part of um, the prayer invasion last night that was in Alaska. Amazing. Pastor Callie. Pastor Bob, Pastor Cindy, Pastor Todd, and some more, and others on the prayer team. Last night, it was Pastor Chris and Pastor David. Um, they're putting their feet on the soil of America, on the soil of America, and um, in different regions. And we are praying for this nation. There are churches and believers all over this world that are praying now, rising up and praying and using their voices and remembering the power of prayer, remembering God's promises about praying and, um, and just his promises over our life. And you know what? We are, we are an army. We are rising up. Our world needs prayer right now. We are co-laboring with God. Isn't that incredible? We're co-laboring with the creator of the universe. And so let's just begin by um, exalting him. Let's begin right now by lifting him up. And we, you know, I was singing, some of you may have just saw me because I was just waiting for my Facebook Live to come up. And, and the song that was in my spirit was, we lift you high, Yahweh, Yahweh, we lift you high. 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 We lift you high. We exalt your name. We exalt your name, Jesus. We exalt your name. We're not here just praying words. We're here in the presence of our King. We are here in the presence of our King. Isn't that amazing? He's right here with us. I think about that every day when I walk down the stairs into my house, I just thank him. And I, I wanna start by my own repentance. And I know so many of us, we, we love the Lord so much. We're so committed. You are so committed to the Lord. You're on these prayer calls every morning, but all of us have moments of distraction where something else is lifted higher than the Lord. And I think about that sometimes when I wake up in the morning and when I pick up my phone and I look for a text before I look to the Lord and my heart just thinks after I do it, like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Let us, let us constantly be reminded that you are first in our life, that you are on the throne of our hearts, Lord. We thank you that you are more important because you, you are our God. You are our Lord. You are our master. You are our lover. You are our king. 
And so we, I just repent right now for any distraction. I, I thank you, God, that you, you bring me back, that you bring us back to our first love, our first love, our first love. So when we wake up in the morning, you, your spirit and our, our spirit connects. We think of you first. Who better to get a message from, a text from, an email from than the Lord God Most High who just speaks and his presence is with us, right, ladies? His presence is with us. So we just come to you now, Lord, and we thank you, God. We thank you, God, that you are our first love and that you want to be with us always. What a perfect love you are. You always are with us. You desire us constantly. You're leaning in and waiting for us to check our messages and, he, and, and want to hear your voice first. And it's the same thing as we lay our head on the pillow at night. Remind us, Lord. Ladies, we can make this a discipline we can start by making this a discipline. We discipline ourselves when we wake up in the morning. We don't touch our phone. We don't look at our computer. We look to the Lord first. We just get on our knees or we look to a picture of something that reminds us of him or we just say his name. But we make this a discipline when we go to bed at night that the, the that the phone is not the last thing, the screen is not the last thing we see, but a song in our hearts or a, a, a just a, I love you, Jesus. A, a, just a laying there and thinking about our day and saying, Lord, what did I do that pleased you? Anything I did that didn't please you, I just, I, I repent and I thank you that you love me, that he is our first love when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, we learn how to practice the presence of God. Lord, teach us how to practice your presence in all we do all day long. But as we, re, as we have that discipline, it becomes a desire of our heart. And then it turns into delight and it's so easy. And it's a delight. Lord draws to that place like Jesus who just delighted in communion and union with the Father, Lord God. So I thank you for that as we open up this morning. I, um, I asked the Lord this morning for anything he had to say to you. And, you know, it's funny how you can hear something so clearly. Um, and I, I did. But then I just kind of kept pressing in for more. And right before we got on the call, he just said the same thing again. So I'm giving you the message that he said to you this morning. And he said it to me this morning. And I know it's not only going to encourage you, but it's going to strengthen you. And it's going to remind you of what matters most in this walk that we have right now. And this commitment we have in our life to, to walk as a Christian and to make an impact in the world and to glorify God. And this is what I heard him say. Ladies, I promise you, I heard him say it and he reminded me and reminded me. So here is my message to you this morning as we as we walk into this prayer call. He said to tell you, I hear your prayers. I hear your prayers. As a matter of fact, if you have a journal right now, I just want you to write down, you hear my prayers. You hear my prayers. And Lord, I thank you. Thank him right now. Thank him right now because he wants you to know that for many, many reasons. So some of you might be, um, some of you might feel discouraged right now. So in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single praying woman on this call who has been crying out to you, Lord, and praying and they feel discouraged right now. They are losing hope or they are just feeling as if they have been waiting for so long. And I thank you, God, that you say to them, I hear your prayers. Give them hope right now. Let them strengthen them. Let that be a, a fresh wind blowing right into their hearts and their mind and their physical body. And their emotions are raising up, rising up right now in the name of Jesus if they're discouraged. And I think about some of you who may be um, just walking through grief. You know, even Jesus, he prayed when he was grieving. He prayed when he found out John the Baptist was beheaded, his cousin that he loved so much, but he went straight to prayer. And he would not have gone to be with the father if he thought the father didn't hear his prayers. Does that make sense? He knew. And so if you are in grief right now for anything, if there is things in your life that are, they feel like they are just tearing your heart apart, I pray right now that, uh, that you just uh, rest 
in this word, I hear your prayers. Begin to thank him right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, the creator of the universe, master of this universe, giver of life. You hear my prayers. And I thank you for that right now. He hears our prayers. Um, there's a teaching that I heard years ago from Pastor Linda Walker. And I, I sense that right now, if you can just write this down, if you can just um, take your own circumstances right now, because see, you're praying for the world and we're praying for the United States of America here on this call, but you also have prayer requests of your own and of close family members. So we have to remember the truths of God. And Linda Walker, just, just jot this down and you can digest this and you can talk to God about where you are in your prayers later or let his spirit just kind of prompt you right now when you write these down to where you are and then we'll pray over this truth. But he, he, God hears our prayers. And the truth is God always answers our prayers. He always answers our prayers. But his answer is sometimes yes. Let's write that down. Sometimes yes. We've all had yeses from God. And they feel so amazing. And we're just in awe of the goodness when we feel the yes and something we needed. The sometimes yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's not now. And sometimes it's, I have something better for you. And so when you're praying, when we're praying even now, and we don't understand maybe why we don't see the answer right away, we have to remember, does that mean that God did not answer prayer? It doesn't, because God said this morning, I hear your prayers and his promises remain. He answers prayers when you ask, when you're in union with him and you ask. So Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you, God, that as we pray for America this morning, Lord, that you are listening, Lord God, and that your answers as we lift up all of these things and declare and pray, your answers are yes, no, not now, or I have something better. But God, we trust you. We stand in awe of you. We love you, Lord God. We thank you that Jesus the Christ, our Christ, that Jesus modeled our prayer walk, Lord God. He taught us how to pray, Lord God. So we come before you. We come before you just like Jesus did. We come before you just like Jesus did. We, we, we separate ourselves right now. We separate ourselves right now and just come to you, Lord, because we want you, Lord. We need you, God. We need you now. We need you now. Just tell him what you need right now. Tell him what you need right now. Tell him how much you love him right now. We need you more than anything, God, your presence. We need your presence. We need your presence for strength. We thank you, God, right now as we begin to pray for our country, Lord God, our nation, Lord God, and all that is involved. Lord, there are 323 women right now here to pray, and men here to pray with you, here to talk to you. You know, prayer is just talking to God. Don't ever forget that. Um, Jesus, even when he taught us to pray in Matthew 5, I believe it is, he talked about uh, hypocritical prayers and he talked about wordy prayers and he just he warned against it because he just wants you to get with him and to tell him what you need and to talk to him and and that's what we believe right now so I thank you God right now for for what is about to happen I thank you for our pastors that are going across the nation and lifting their voices up on the regions of this nation who need you so badly Lord we don't even understand all that has to happen but you do. You understand it all, God, and you are on your throne, and you love every person in this world more than we could ever imagine, Jesus. Your word says that, and we believe it, Lord God. Nothing can shake our belief, Lord God, when we stay in union with you, in union with you. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. Revive us, O oh Lord. Awaken us, O oh Lord. If there has been any part of us on this call, any of us, your prayer warriors, your, your remnant right now, if there's any part of me 
that is not awakened and alive every minute for you in my mind, my emotions, my spirit, anything, just to revive it right now, Lord God. Thank you for strengthening us every day as we remain in you. We praise your holy name, Lord God. And we, we ask you, Lord, to revive our nation. People that once knew you, just waken them up. Let the scales fall off their eyes again. Any deceit at all, we just any unbelief at all, any doubt at all, any anytime their eyes have gone to something and all of a sudden it's created just some kind of an unbelief or a deceit, a lie inside of them that they begin to believe that you are not perfect and holy and good and reigning and you have a good plan for this world and you love us more than anyone. Let them remember the cross, Lord Jesus. Let them remember what they have heard in the past. And Lord, I think of all of the souls. Let's pray for the souls right now. Come on, ladies, just lift up your voices. Picture those souls, people you know and people you don't know that have not, have not understood, said yes to, collided with the cross, the truth, the love that Jesus has for them. Lord, we lift them up now. We pray for every soul, Lord God. You are the answer to the chaos. You are the answer to the violence. You are the answer to the riots. You are the answers to the policies that are just so against your ways, Lord God. You are the answer to the racism. You are the answer to depression. You are the answer to all illness. You took it all on the cross, Jesus. You bore it all for us to be free, Jesus, not for some to be free, but for all that call on your name, Lord Jesus. So we just thank you, God, that we as a church will open our mouths and speak the gospel. Come on, ladies, come on, men, right now, pray yourself personally, call out to God, ask him for a new boldness. Holy Spirit, overflow us right now, flow out of us, Holy Spirit. Your power can't even walk around this earth without wanting more people to know about the gospel. So you just, just lean into him, let him lead you, let him lead you. So when you walk out the door every day, you're thinking, who else can I tell the gospel to? Like Paul who said in the scriptures, I just can't help but preach. I can't help but preach. You know, I, that didn't mean from a platform. That meant that he spoke the word of God to the people he knew. He shared the good news. Let us share the good news of Jesus. Let us walk every day. Just, I beg you, Lord, to break anything off of me that keeps me, any lies, any fear that would ever keep me from preaching your word from sharing the good news, from pray, for praying for someone, for speaking the name of Jesus, for showing the love of Jesus and asking people how they are. That's where the doors open, you know, when you ask someone, how are you doing? And you really mean it. And then they answer you. It's incredible what people will say. And they're open. The word of God right now says that the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful, but we're the workers. We got to be there. So I just thank you, God, for that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and take communion. As a matter of fact, right now I want to take communion, and because I'm, we're talking about those in need. We're talking about the world that we're praying for, and we want the world to come to Jesus, to the knowledge of Christ, to the knowledge of what He did for us on the cross. So, I, I you take communion for whatever is most important for you this morning. But as I take communion collectively, I want to lift up the world. I want this communion in the blood of Jesus and the cross to be for those that don't know him yet. So we, we remember what you did on the cross this morning, Jesus. We're always and forever overwhelmed, overwhelmed by what you did for us. You left your throne. You left your throne. There is no other God like you. Every other God. I just, in the name of Jesus, I break that lie off people. Good, well-intentioned. Oh, people that are trying to just do good on their own without the blood of the cross. 
saying things like, I just won't choose one God over another. That's just not right. Everybody, there's so many paths to God. No, that's a lie from hell. There's not one other God in any religion that came down as a humble servant, even to the point of death for us. Only you, Jesus. So we take this right now for blind eyes to see, for the lost to be found, for every, gosh, I just think of even the testimony of Ron Stone that I heard the other day. We need, in, we need people in every mountain of influence that get to the point where enough people have said, Jesus is your answer, that they, that they just lay down pride and desperation and a conviction of what their own life looked like, just like we all did. And they say, I choose Jesus. The name of Jesus is being spoken more than it's ever been spoken in history of the United States of America. Late, well, I don't know if that's true. I don't want to say a sentence that's not true, but I, my spirit is leaping every time I see and hear the name of Jesus being spoken out of the mouths of Hollywood, out of the mouths of the politicians, all the financial world. People are rising and speaking his name. And so we thank you, Lord, and we take this communion for all those that have not known you yet, Lord Jesus. We, we thank you for the healing in America, the body of Christ, your broken body, broken, broken for our healing. Heal all those with COVID, Lord Jesus. Heal all those with the flu, Lord Jesus, any other, that any other virus, Lord Jesus. This is just illness that you have already died for, Lord God. So heal them, Lord Jesus. Heal all cancers, every illness, the body of Christ broken. You took the stripes for our healing. And we take this now that you heal our land in the, in their, in the bodies of men and women and in their souls, our souls, Lord God. Heal us, Lord Jesus. Heal us. In the body of Christ broken for us. Oh, God, we love you so much. Come on, the blood of Christ. How beautiful you are. How beautiful you are. How beautiful you are, Lord. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your blood. We thank you that you took upon yourself all of the sins of the world. At the time you took those sins for past sins, for future sins, Jesus. We thank you for everything you took for us so that we could be right with God and right standing with God. And we could sit here right now. Come on, ladies. We thank you. Pray to him right now. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you that we can sit here and talk to you, God. And you hear our prayers. You hear our prayers, the blood of Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, the redemption, so that we have right standing with God. We thank you for, that you took rejection for our acceptance, Lord God. For all of those out there, I just sense that there are so many young people, young people out there, young people out there who have been rejected, rejected by either their parents or by peers. And that rejection has taken them into a place of hopelessness or depression. Their identity is false. They don't understand their identity in Christ and how they are a child of God, that Jesus died on the cross for them. And we take this for them. You took rejection, Jesus. You were rejected for their acceptance, for our acceptance. And so we just plead the blood of Jesus over all rejection. We break it in the name of Jesus. We break rejection. I just, I just, I just command rejection to go in the name of Jesus. Jesus has already defeated you. We thank you, God the blood mm. and the blood of Jesus I love you I love you Jesus we love you Jesus um, I want to read out of Matthew the book of I'm sorry out of the book of John this morning and these are familiar passages but um, they're just so important right now just so important for us to continue to remember 
for that. Ask, why are we praying? We're praying because we're, we're communing with God. We're talking to God. We, are, we must remain in prayer. And so I want to read out of the truths of what Jesus said and, and, and just uh, allow ourselves to continue to uh, remember and remain in the truths of what Jesus taught us, okay? What Jesus taught us. And he said in John 15, and I, let me just say this too. I encourage you to read uh, John 14 through 18, all in that, uh, the, those chapters, because Jesus is about to leave, but he teaches so much for us. And it's just, to me, the time right now is the same. He, he teaches, and then he says, I tell you this so that you may still have joy. I tell you this so that you will have peace. I tell you this so that you will remain in belief and you will not lose your belief. And so these are times where we have to just listen to those words from Jesus, understanding that he spoke those words because he understood that if we didn't remain in him, we would lose our joy or our peace or our belief. Does that make sense? So we want to just dig into these scriptures, but I just want to read part of it. He says, you know, I tell you, like in one part of it, he says, I tell you all these things will, will happen. So you still trust and cling to me. So he's, he's letting the disciples and us know anything, all that he has to say here so that we still trust him. We still cling to him. We still have joy. We still have peace. We don't lose belief. You get it, right? We thank you, God. So uh, John 15, I am a true sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitless branch to yield a greater harvest. So you must remain in life union with me for I remain in life union with you. Your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are the true disciples who glorify my father. Um, I'm looking at the time. I love you so much. I, there's so much more I wanted to talk to you about today, but I want to respect your time. I want to respect your time. So I just want to close by just saying, um, Jesus, I thank you that we can lift up our nation. I pray right now, Lord, that in this simple prayer as I close, you take every word that I say, and it expands and it multiplies and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day, Lord, what we need today. Every person on this call, daily bread, daily manna. Help us, Lord God. Help us not to sin, Lord God. Deliver us from evil in this nation, Lord God. Forgive us. Again today, Lord God, and Lord, help us forgive others as you forgive us, God. I thank you, God, that we declare, we decree, we pray that we are one nation. We pray for the United States of America. We are one nation, and we are under God, your authority, Lord God, one nation under God your authority, your ways, your precepts, your plans, your word. We are one nation under God again. We are indivisible. We are not divided. We pray that the church become united, not divided in the name of Jesus. The church, not divided, but united to show the world who you are. Help us remain, let every pastor remain so close to you. Every church member, every Christian, be, remember that you are the vine, that we are the branches. We must not be divided. And we hear words of division, Lord God. So I just come against those and break those curses. And I just thank you for unity in the church so that our nation will be united. So goes the church, so goes the nation. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty, freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That is the true freedom, liberty, freedom in Christ, 
freedom from sin, freedom from depression, freedom from addiction, freedom from death and suicide, freedom from poverty, freedom from racism, liberty, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom in Christ is what we declare, decree and pray for, for this nation and every individual in this nation. Liberty and justice for all God. You are a God of justice. Your justice is the truth. So we just pray against uh, all the lies of what social justice is. And we pray for the truth of social justice, which is your truth, how you see what you say, your eyes on every person created in your image and your word about what love looks like. We love you, Jesus. I thank you ladies for listening today. Uh, remember that we have our crown conference coming up. You can go, it's in December, but please register if you feel like you should be there because we desire you to be there. And next week we're gonna be in Florida. So that's on the event page too. I thank you. If you wanna sow into this, remember, keep praying. He hears your prayers. Keep praying, he hears your prayers. Prayer, fasting and giving, that threefold full cord is changing all of our lives. And we thank God for the blessings uh, that he provides. We are just his servants. We love you so much. God bless you all. Bye-bye.